viewers all over the world. Thank you for watching and also for praying along. Thank you for studying your Bible. Thank you for meditating on the Word of God that you have stored up in your heart. Thank you for committing your soul, spirit, and body to the authority of the living Word of God in you. Thank you for training your mind to focus on God's Word and wonderful promises for your life. Thank you for not allowing Satan to take hold of your heart, your thoughts, your word, your mind, and your character. If we are true children of God, we must remain inwardly pure. Did you hear that? If we are genuine children of God, we must remain inwardly pure. We must remain inwardly holy, self-controlled, and righteous. It is not only our outward appearance that I should let people know that we are children of God. But also our innermost being. Our minds, our hearts, and our thoughts must be totally controlled by God through his word and by his spirit. Every one of us, as you are seeing today, came from the invisible world. Meaning, everyone you are seeing today came from an unseen world. If you are a child of God, you just came from God who is unseen. If you are a child of Satan, your life also is from the world of Satan that is ruled by sins and sinful desires. All of us came from the world that is not seen with the physical eyes. We came without anything, and on the last day, all of us will return back without anything. Anything we are struggling now to have in terms of money, possession, materialism, fame, popularity, and the like. All these things are vanity upon vanity. As you go about your daily activities, as you go about your daily life, don't forget Jesus' second coming. Don't forget that your life came from somewhere and will one day return to the place where your life is designed to spend eternity either with God or with Satan. If you are a child of God, your life came from God and your body is simply the temple of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, your body becomes the place where God dwells through his word and by his spirit. How do you use your body? If your body is the place where God dwells through his word and by his spirit, 
How do you use your body? How have you been using your body? If your life comes from God, how have you been living your life? Life is designed to be lived to glorify God and not Satan. Life is designed to be lived to glorify God and not sins and sinful desires. If your life comes from God, what is your business with sins and sinful desires? What is your business with immorality? What is your business with lust? Fornication, adultery. What is your business with unforgiveness, bitterness, worries, doubt, unbelief, fear, or condemnation? If your life comes from God, what is your business with partiality? God is the God of impartiality. He wants his children to exhibit justice. He wants his children to be impartial in their dealings with their neighbors. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you read the whole thing from beginning to the end, that you are the temple of the living God. God wants and plans to dwell in you through his word and by his spirit. Where God is, there is nothing like sins and sinful desires. You can know if truly your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your life can tell if truly your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you will want what God wants. You will want it for the purpose that God wants it. And you will use it for the purpose that God uses them. Life is a gift from God that must be used to glorify God. This very day you have found yourself is also a gift from God that must be used to glorify God. What are you doing today? What are your activities like? Let your thoughts, let your words, and let your character, even your business or career, glorify God. Each day is given by God as a gift to everybody so we can use each day as a gift from him to glorify him in our doings. There are many places to go. There are many things to talk about. There are many things to think about. But you can decide to tune your heart to God. To God's word and God's promises. Talk about Jesus. Meditate on his word. Stop having sympathy for worries. Stop accommodating fear in your heart. Stop accommodating doubt and unbelief in your heart. Your mind is meant to be God's instrument. It's not meant to be a place where negative thoughts are meant to be harbored. If your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, your mind also belongs to God. Your heart also belongs to God. Your conscience also must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Who is controlling your mind? 
who is controlling your thoughts, who is speaking to your conscience, these questions are very important. If your body must remain the temple of the Holy Spirit, then you need to watch and pray. Turn with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. Chapter 19, we'll start reading from verses 45. Luke chapter 19, verses 45. Then, we are talking about Jesus here. Jesus cleanses the temple. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Did you take note of what is written here? Luke chapter 19 from verses 45 straight down to verses 47. I take it again. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Take note of the word, My house. You are the house of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the house where Jesus dwells through his word and by his spirit. You are the house where God dwells through his word and by his spirit. Your body is the living ministry of Jesus Christ. Your body is supposed to be the place where the spirit of prayer is meant to dwell. Your heart must be coordinated by the spirit of prayer. Your conscience must be tuned to God and his word. I read again. It is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den, a den of thieves. What is going on in your life? What are you promoting above God? How often do you pray in a day? How many times have you prayed today? Are you watching this online service without a prayer for heart? Your heart ought to be occupied by God through his word and by his spirit. When we are talking about prayer here, we mean an act of communicating your needs to God through his word and by his spirit. Prayer does not go alone. Prayer goes with watching. If you are watching, you are simply Standing against sins and sinful desires. That is the first assignment. If you are praying, you are simply communicating all your needs to God through his word and by his spirit. Your life is supposed to be coordinated by the spirit of watching and the spirit of prayer. If your life is truly coordinated by the spirit of watching and prayer, what is your business with worries, anxieties, depression, fear, doubt, unbelief? 
Why are you condemning yourself? You have called yourself the worst sinner. If you are the worst sinner, you are the best person to be forgiven by God. You are the best person, the first and the best person to be forgiven, to be forgiven by Jesus Christ. He came because of you. Your sins are not supposed to stop you from praying. Because God himself had already made provision for your forgiveness. By Christ's stripes, your sins are forgiven. If you are sick, you are not supposed to believe that that sickness is designed to lead you to death. You are supposed to know that Jesus Christ already paid the price of your complete and perfect healing on the cross of Calvary. By his stripes, we are all healed. You inclusive. If your life is truly coordinated by the spirit of watching and fasting, what is your business without unbelief and sexual immorality? Prayer, if it must be answered by God, must be coordinated by the spirit of faith and no doubt. Prayer, if it must be answered by God, must be coordinated by the spirit of holiness or righteousness. The prayer of the righteous ones availed much. God answers prayers, but only prayers that are offered in holiness and purity. If you are truly watching and praying, what is your business with sexual immorality? What is your business with sins and sinful desires? Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Take your reading from the beginning. To the end, we are going to read it from the first verse to the last verse. The, any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Verses 3. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life if then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? Verses 5. I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? Verse 6. But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Verse 7. Now therefore, it is already an altar failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? 
No, you yourself do wrong and cheat. And you do these things to your brethren. Verses 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived, neither fornicators. I hope you are listening. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. Verses 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Start taking more note from verses 12 straight down to the last part. Verses 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both. Did you hear that? Verses 13. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality. I hope you are listening. If we are truly watching and praying as Jesus Christ has instructed, what is our business with sexual immorality? What is your business with sexual immorality? If you are a child of God, called by God, a worker in the vineyard, a true believer and a true creation, what is your business with sexual immorality? I repeat again. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Verses 15. Take note of this spiritual question. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in you through his word and by his spirit. The Spirit of God has no single business with immorality. Watch and pray. Verses 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or... Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you, have, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Verses 20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, 
which are God's. The time of ignorance is over. God is no longer desiring to dwell in any mountain. He is no longer desiring to dwell in any ocean or anywhere. He wants to live in you through his word and by his spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The dwelling place of the Most High God. If God lives in you, your life will be pure and holy. God is holy. And he wants all his children to be holy. God is pure. And he wants all his children to be pure. He wants your hearts to be pure. He wants your thoughts to be pure. He wants your words to be pure. And he wants your mind, your conscience, and your character to be pure as well. Right now, it is time for prayer. Father, we thank you. For giving us your own bread. Your living word. Give them the grace to accept. Your living word. In the midst of their hearts. Let your word in them. Bring them to a place. Of genuine repentance. And salvation. Right now, I command your sins to be forgiven. No matter the sins you must have committed, sins of immorality, fornication, masturbation, adultery, adultery, sorcery, unforgiveness, bitterness, fear, doubt, unbelief, whatever sins you must have committed either in the dream or in the physical. That Satan has been using, that Satan has been using to cause you sickness, disease, setback, ignorance, failure, backwardness, pain. Whatever sins committed by you that Satan has been keeping to use against you on the last day, so you will be prevented from entering into the kingdom of God. I command them to be washed away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Receive your forgiveness. Receive your total healing and your deliverance. Receive your eternal salvation. I command your life to be dedicated to God. Let your soul, spirit, and body become the temple of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Let your life be filled with the spirit of watching and prayer, as Jesus Christ has commanded, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now receive your blessings. Receive your blessings. Receive your breakthroughs. I command this day to favor you and your career. Let this day favor you and members of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Congratulations. I can see your heart meditating, watching, and praying naturally. I can see your conscience focusing on the word and promises of God for your life and family. 
I can see you worrying no more, fearing no more, doubting no more, and condemning yourself no more. I can see you receiving answers to all your prayers. And I can see you testifying as well. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Once again, my name is Christopher Oji. I am here in Enugu State, Nigeria, West Africa. And the ministry that Jesus Christ has given to me is called the City of Jesus International Ministry located here in Enugu State, Nigeria, West Africa. If you are in Nigeria, you are expected to attend service on Sunday. We have normal Sunday service, which will start early in the morning by 7.45 a.m. You are expected to sit before that time. God bless you.